I'm going to give you three videos on the Rook and King versus King checkmate. I'm not necessarily going to show you the shortest checkmates. What I want to show you is a procedure, a strategy for accomplishing the checkmate from just about any position on the board. To do that, first of all, this video we're going to concentrate on a um, procedure that was used by Reuben Fine in his great book, Basic Chess Endings, which I would highly recommend for you to get. It has a lot of information on the ending. And uh, this is going to be about how to checkmate with the king and rook versus the opponent's king. Reuben Fine says that from this position, the checkmate can be accomplished in 16 moves. We'll find out in the next video that he was wrong about that, but he didn't have a computer to analyze his his uh, games with. So first thing we want to do is to drive the opponent's king out of the center. And so the white king begins moving toward the center. And now the white king moves to where he can guard the d4 square, taking that square away from the black king. Black tries to remain in the center, and now white takes away two squares, d4 and d5, both uh, no longer available to the black king. The black king stays in the center, but moves directly opposite the white king. Here the kings are said to stand in opposition. And in this kind of position, white uses his rook to cut off an entire row. He cuts off the e-file, and the king has to move toward the edge of the board. He has to move out of the center toward the edge. The white king guards the squares on the d-file, and the rook guards the squares on the e-file, gives check to the king. The king has to move out of the center. The king moves to f5. The white king does not move directly opposite. He moves to a square that is a knight's move away from the black king. And the reason for this is so that when the black king moves directly opposite the white king, the rook can cut off another file. In fact, that's exactly what happens here. The king moves to g5, and again, the king moves not directly opposite, but a knight move away from the black king. Now the black king, rather than having another row cut off, moves down to g6, but the white king just follows, and now the black king comes back rather than running into the corner. He runs to the edge. And now the white king, again, moving not directly opposite the black king, but a knight's move away. He'll chase the black king down into the corner. If the black king now moves to h5, the rook will move from g1 to h1, and that'll be checkmate. So the black king really has only one reasonable alternative. That's to move to h3. The white king continues to follow. Now the white rook must move. If the king moves to f3, king takes rook on g1, and the game is a draw. But this is a very good square. The rook moves to g3 and confines the black king to the two squares, h1 and h2. All he can do is sh shuttle back and forth between those two squares while white sets up his mating position. And rook to h3, checkmate. As you notice, the sending position, the white king guards the squares on the g file, g1, g2, and g3, and the rook checks from h3 and guards the entire h file. That's checkmate. If you want to look at some of the other videos that I've prepared on chess strategy, you can go to www.chessstrategiesblog.com and take a look at the other videos. I hope you'll Enjoy them, and I hope you learned from this video.